Hey guys, welcome to TongaPocketGuide.com, Tonga's largest travel guide. My name is Robin and today I am joined by Pita Tofa Tofua, an Olympic athlete competing in Taekwondo and canoe and fencing and skiing, but that was in 2016, to talk about the beautiful kingdom of Tonga. Uh, how are you doing today, Pita? Are you still in Tokyo? Uh, no, I'm, I'm actually uh, on my last day of quarantine in, uh, in Sydney. I, um, I, I head, out, head out of quarantine tomorrow. And uh, just for clarification, I, the only fencing I've done is a fence around our uh, our house in Tonga. <laughs> oh, okay. I just saw some uh, fencing on your social media, so I was like, oh, maybe <laughs> maybe he's prepping for the next Olympic Games. Is that a surprise? Well, well, it's, it's, it's a great sport. It's a great sport, and it has crossed my mind before. So this could be the first, right? <laughs> yeah. I did fencing in my youth. I really I really did enjoy it. All right, so um, let's start with why you are famous and where people would have seen you before. So since 2016, you have been the flag bearer for Tonga at the Olympic Games and made quite the impression for wearing the traditional Tonga outfit, which is the Ta Ovala. Or maybe it's the oiled, sleek athlete body underneath that drew the crowd, <laughs> who knows? But uh, let's focus on the Ta Ovala. Um, is it an everyday outfit for the people in Tonga? Uh, yes, yes, it is. Um, I actually have my opening ceremony one right here. Oh wow! Um, yeah, this is a taubala. It's made from pandanus, which is a it's a it's a plant that grows along the coastline of Tonga. And uh, this one here specifically has different patterns. Uh, some are light, some are dark. Some have different, you know, pattern patterning on them. And I wore this because one, it's a traditional thing that we've worn in Tonga for many years. Um, since the beginning of Tonga, basically, but also because these patterns represent the different, you know, the different people of Tonga and Polynesia. Some are darker, some are lighter, some have different patterns. We're all a little bit different, but we're all cut from the same, the same cloth. So, do so it had a cultural and... significance. So, do different islands and villages have different pattern and different taovala, or is it kind of a one size fit all around Tonga? Uh, they. Traditionally, we have different patterns uh, from different uh, different areas or the way that they make them is a little bit different. But these days, what kind of happens is, um, you know, someone from Vava'u can wear what's called a fra'apai or uh, someone from Tongatapu. So when I went in the, the closing ceremony of the 2016 Olympics and the 2018 Olympics opening ceremony, I wore what's called a fra'apai, which is from ha'apai. It's a slightly different style. Okay, that's really interesting. So speaking of the Tonga culture, um, during my last visit in Tonga, one of the parts of the local culture I just couldn't get enough was the food. So I know that you used to harvest cassava in your, uh, in your youth, and cassava is kind of a potato-like crop from the Pacific Island, for lack of a better descriptive. So what other foods and dishes would you recommend travelers to try when in Tonga? Oh. I mean, I, I love uh, I love all of the root crops in Tonga, right? So the cassava, which is also known as tapioca or manioke, um, you have your sweet potato, etc. But I think certainly if you visit Tonga, you have to try, you have to have a umu. You have to go and eat the umu. The umu is the underground oven where we where we cook food, and I um, it just it's the food is cooked underground and the smoke kind of sears through. So it's somewhere between an oven and smoking the food, and it just tastes fantastic. Um, the second thing which I highly recommend is otta, otta, uh, otta ika. It's uh, raw fish, and it's, uh, it's, it's put in coconut cream, and then all of the, all of the small uh, vegetables are put around it, and it just it tastes amazing. Anything sweet for the sweet tooth around? Ah, uh, sweet tooth. I'd say the uh, uh, the uh, what's it called? The uh, it, the name just the name slips my mind. It's uh, not. There's manioke tama is one of them, which is like the the cassava in like a a sweet version of it. And the other one is called faikakai, which is basically. Uh, the root crop, so either like a taro or a or a cassava, and then it's it's cooked in like a it's cooked in like this coconut cream mixed with sugar sort of mix, and it's beautiful. So that's called uh, faikakai. I've had a chance to try that in Tonga, and it's just oh, you have? amazing. Oh yeah, oh man, <laughs> I'm I'm definitely a sweet tooth. So yeah. 
Um, oh, fantastic. So, so uh, brilliant. So I feel like the tastes of Tonga are not spoken enough of, but in fact, I, I feel that Tonga itself is not spoken enough of either. So what about the sites and scenes in uh, Tonga that you would recommend? What, what are your favorite spots? Uh, my, my favorite spots, uh, you know, I, I, I certainly think the beaches and sometimes it, it may require a bit of an adventure to, to go out and find the, the different beaches, right? There's a few around Tongatapu, but I think some of the um, some of the really beautiful ones are up in uh, Ewa, Hapai and, and Vava'u. And, and that's where it really opens up. Uh, there's certainly some around Tongatapu, but if you can go, go off to some of the little islands and that's where the, you know, so it's certainly the beaches for me, certainly the beaches. Uh, another site is you can go and see the Ha'amonga Maui, which is, you, you know, it's at one side of Tonga and it's basically the stone hench of Tonga, right? And, you just sit there looking at the size of these rocks thinking, how did they make this? How did they make this a thousand years ago? Because there's no holes near the beach where the rocks were cut out from. They were brought in, right? They say, they call it the Ha'amonga Maui because they say Maui. Maui, the, you know, the, the demigod from Moana, right? The, um, they say he brought it over. So, you know, it's got a lot of history there. So certainly that, um, and I, I actually recommend just going and, and seeing the going and seeing the people, going to a church on a Sunday morning, just standing in it, even if you're not religious, just stand there and feel the music. I think that's how you are. And you'll probably get invited to a feast after if you go. So, Yep, we've experienced that as well. And definitely the singing oh, yeah. is angelic and the food is delicious. I don't know which one I prefer, if it's the food or the singing. I have to, I have to say I'm, I'm torn in between both. Well, it's good when you mix them both together, when someone's singing while you're eating. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that's a pretty good uh, bucket list start for anyone heading to Tonga. And speaking of travelers, as an international athlete, you probably encounter people from all around the world. So for people looking to travel to Tonga, can you teach them a couple of must-known words um, when traveling to Tonga? Uh, the, the, the two that you have to know is malo e lele, uh, and that means maloi lele means thank you for being well, but the that's the literal translation. The real translation is along the lines of uh, hello, how are you kind of thing, uh, or more just hello, maloi lele, and then the other one is just just to keep life simple for all the viewers, malo, malo just means thank you. Nice. So if you say hello and thank you to everyone, you'll be fine. How would you say my name is Peter, for instance? Um, my name, Hingoa, is name is Pita. Or Kingoa is Robin. That's it. Perfect. Right. I'm ready to go. <laughs> All you're, right. You're so, good to go. So, with that in mind, thank you so much for your time, Peter. Before you go, what's the first thing you're going to do next time you are heading to Tonga? You know what? Uh, my father's probably going to take me off the plane, and before we even get home to have a shower, put my baggage down. He's going to take me to the farm and we'll probably be, uh, we'll, he'll probably have me at the farm for a day uh, uh, pulling a sweet potato out. But as soon as we've done that, I'm off to the beach and I'm going fishing. So that's why you're such in a good shape, right? It's because your father cracks you onto work every time. I have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> he, he makes me, he makes me go and uh, bring, he brings me back down to earth. <laughs> All right, mate. So it was a pleasure chatting with you about Tonga. We loved having you here, sharing more about your fantastic country. In the meantime, if you are interested to visit beautiful Tonga, head to tongapocketguide.com, your complete free travel guide to Tonga. And uh, come back anytime, Peter. Malo. Okay, malo, malo, Peter. <laughs>